Welcome to Teachers Talking Teaching, where we celebrate and elevate the art of teaching. So we're back with Tammy Wolf, who is a 7th and 8th grade language arts teacher. Welcome, Tammy. Thank you. Yeah, we are here to talk more about your practice as a literacy educator. So tell us something that's really fun and energizing in your classroom this year. So, um, oh wow, fun and energizing. Well, I think that it's all fun and energizing. <laughs> um, so I love setting up an atmosphere in my classroom that I think is a place for all kids. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I do a lot of, um, I really try to figure out where is a kid going to be able to tap into my room. Mm -hmm. And so everything is intentional about every single thing that I do in my classroom. And I know that that's true for many, many teachers. Mm -hmm. And so everything from like where the lamps are placed in my room to the homework assignment that might be due next week. Um, I'm, I try, I'm a really reflective practitioner and I try really hard to be constantly, there's a thing that I learned in Alaska called PADER, plan, do, evaluate, refine. Mm -hmm. And so I'm constantly in a place of PADERing mm -hmm. <laughs> everything in my room. And I think that one of the reasons that I love being an educator is that, and this is probably why it's frustrating for some people too, but there's no arrival point. We know that. Mm -hmm. There is no there's no time that you've arrived. And so now we have reached Nirvana and we are able to like relax in our practice because we've gotten there, you know, uh -huh. um, there is not that for me. Uh -huh. And so it's always this constant refinement and it's because our kids are always changing. Mm -hmm. Um, and so what I think is fun in my classroom is First and foremost, just how it's set up. I have lots mm -hmm. of flexible seating for kids to choose where they want to mm -hmm. be so that they can be as comfortable when they're accessing reading and writing with me as possible. Um, because we all get kids from all the whole spectrum of really not liking mm -hmm. <laughs> reading and writing for whatever reason to that's the only thing that they want to do and they wish mm -hmm. they could be in an English class all day, mm -hmm. right? And so um, so what I want to do is I want my physical environment to match the philosophy of, of learning for mm -hmm. me. And so you would see a classroom that has no fluorescent lights on, that mm -hmm. has lamps, that has flex, that has comfortable seating, mm -hmm. that has places for kids to be able to like read and sit on the floor, um, or they can sit in comfy chairs placed placed around the room. I have different placement in my room of mm -hmm. a single desk or a group of three or a group of five, and so. Um, so just that is like the environment is what I think is what you would notice mm -hmm. would be fun at first. Um, and then once getting into the rituals and routines and the climate and the culture of my class, then that's a whole nother level of, of like, there's the physical environment mm -hmm. and then there's the rituals and routines that come in. Um, and then it's all set up for kids to be able to mm -hmm. access literacy in my room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what's something that you are hoping to have your students experience this year as a reader or as a writer? Is there something you're looking to really elevate in their experience? Sure. Um, of course. <laughs> um, what, what for me, literacy is all about is it if for, at the middle school level mm -hmm. is it's this wonderful time in kids development where they're starting to see that they are part of the world. Mm. And I know that it starts in elementary school and then it just keeps soaring when they get to high school. But I have no proof of this, but I think it should be a thing that should be written down. It probably already is. Um, but I feel like seventh and eighth graders are kind of like when your kids are two and three, right? Mm. When kids are two and three developmentally, they start seeing that they're separate from their caregiver. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have the testing twos, mm -hmm. right? That could be terrible or terrific. Mm -hmm. um, but the testing twos are really interesting because they're trying to see like, where are my mm -hmm. boundaries in life? And where, where do I end and my parents begin? Mm -hmm. And where does, where do all my things, where does, where do I fit in the, in the world? Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's why kids are testing. And I feel like that comes back again for seventh and eighth graders. And they start to, because of puberty, they start to see that they can have their own thoughts and feelings mm -hmm. and have their own opinions. And what does that mean? And what does that look like? And so they're constantly reading the world around mm -hmm. them to help them develop 
who they are as people. And so for me, that's why literacy is so exciting Mm -hmm. because when we are reading and writing, I am constantly getting my kids to be reflective of how they see themselves in relationship to what we've just read Mm -hmm. or how they might have an opinion about something that they're learning. Mm -hmm. Um, And seventh grade standards are a lot about the beginning of that work, Mm -hmm. a lot about summarizing, a lot about being able to read the world, talk about the world, and start that. Mm -hmm. And then eighth grade is the standards are heavy into argument, which I love because they love to argue anyway. (laughs) And so I get to channel that. Uh So I get to channel that into what do you care Mm -hmm. about? So in that padering, right, the plan, do, evaluate, refine, I'm always creating lessons and units where I try to think to myself, what do I actually do as a reader and a writer? Mm -hmm. What do I do? Um, And so, because we've got a lot of academic reading and writing, Mm -hmm. but unless you stay in academia and become a teacher or a writer yourself, you might not use all of the things that we are learning and teaching in academic reading and writing. So I try to see what, how do I actually access the world? Mm -hmm. What are the things that I think are important? And so when people ask me, what is your philosophy on teaching and learning and blah, 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 it almost would sound, I think, like I'm more of a social studies teacher because what I want Mm -hmm. to do is I want to produce Mm -hmm. students who are actually citizens and critical thinkers of their world, Mm -hmm. regardless of what they decide to do post-secondary. I want them to be able to navigate through fake news and real news Mm -hmm. and actually think about how their actions on maybe like the butterfly effect small Mm -hmm. level might be affecting the whole or how the whole might be affecting their day-to-day lives. And and I want them to be reflective about themselves. And so seventh and eighth grade, I've taught high school once. I've taught elementary mm-hmm. once in that whole in my whole career. Um, but seventh and eighth grade has been where my heart is, not just because I love, like I have a genuine love mm-hmm. for that age group, but also because of where they are. They are breaking away from their parents. Mm -hmm. They need adults in their lives still to help them navigate the world, but they don't want it to be their parents. Mm -hmm. So not only do I get to take on the role of being that adult figure in their life, but then I can also get them to start questioning Mm -hmm. who they are and what they think about the world. And I personally love doing that through reading and writing. How do you go about, because you have standards you have to teach, Mm -hmm. and how do you go about choosing the literature, the short stories, the poetry, the things you're going to use that are going to meet your standards, but also get the kids Mm -hmm. engaged, get them hooked to have those conversations? Because I know I like to have, I I have taught my fifth graders to be skeptical readers, and I use that term, skeptical Mm -hmm. readers. So I feel like part of the key of that is to put the right pieces in front of them to get, to allow them an opportunity to exercise that ability. Right. So, right. Yeah. So talk about your process for that. So first and foremost, and I know that this is like all the rage and it has been for a while, but I would not have been able to become the teacher that I am today without my teaching partner. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, I think even if you are at a small school and you're the only eighth grade teacher, right? Mm-hmm. You need to find the other teachers and that are your other se- sixth and seventh grade English teachers so that you can push on ideas and really mm-hmm. like, get down to the nitty gritty and really become a team of figuring out what do we really want kids to know and be able to do? Where are they and where do we push them to go? Um, And so that, that has always been that, that those questions of the PLC model have always pushed Mm -hmm. me. And for 11 years, I had the same teammate in eighth grade English with me. Uh Um, And so and he and I joke that we were together longer than some marriages, you know. <laughs> but, um, and so now that I'm at the new school mm-hmm. and he's chosen a different path too, like that has changed. But the mm-hmm. things that we did together, I carry with me. Mm-hmm. And so first it started there of us really taking a critical look at our curriculum and saying, what part of this is school literacy and what part of this is what we considered real literacy. Mm-hmm. And there's a difference. And I and and school literacy is great, but I'm not just going to blindly teach the giver because it's a novel study. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to constantly go, okay, in teaching that, how am I going to get my kids to see themselves, see the world, mm-hmm. not just the way that when I was in school, we just 
read literature and responded to it. Mm -hmm. Things have shifted and changed a lot since then. But I really want them to start connecting with the characters in the books. Mm -hmm. And I also really want to start, I bring in a lot of nonfiction too, because as adult readers, we usually read fiction for fun, mm -hmm. and most of our world is reading nonfiction. Mm -hmm. And so I want to make sure that there's a blend of both of that in my classroom. Um, and so we did some very critical, like deep dives into our standards mm -hmm. and what what we think need to be the most important ones. And the benefit of being in a school for a long time is that you know what your sixth and seventh graders are coming in knowing is in eighth grade. And because of our vertical artic articulation with our high school, mm -hmm. I knew where they needed to go. Mm -hmm. Then when you're looking at those standards, you're able to tailor a little bit more to knowing the kids that are coming in and what mm -hmm. they've, what they have. Right? right. And so, and that's, that's just good teaching. But, um, but then choosing those things, you know, as we're looking at what we want kids to be able to see and critically looking and examining themselves and reading and writing, mm -hmm. we also don't want to ignore things like beautiful language is what we called it. Mm -hmm. It's not called beautiful language in a standard. But that beautiful language are things that people use whether they're trying to give an inspirational speech mm -hmm. or writing song lyrics or like trying to really bring their reader in with like mm -hmm. the, you know, you know. Um, with argument. Um, and so we want to make sure that in the quest that, that there's still a big, you know, <laughs> smorgasbord of things that uh -huh. kids are going to be able to learn and choose from. Um, so about six years ago, our district adopted the units of study for middle mm -hmm. school, mostly, and elementary too. But middle school, the school that I was in, we were one of the first schools in the district to just be the pilot school for it and just dive right in. So I've had some experience with that. And what I love about it is that um, it's not a, we're all going to be on page 58 on, you know, Saturday mm -hmm. or, you know, Monday the 5th or whatever. Um it's about getting kids to be these critical readers and writers. Mm -hmm. And there's never a reproducible in it that you can photocopy either, which is the a little bit of the rub, right? Because I'm like, oh, okay, I need to be a learner and a studier of this curriculum and then, then figure out how I'm going to get my kids to access it. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that, we've, that, I'm, that I've been learning about that is... Um, how to get my kids to be readers with a deep dive into characterization. Um, and in units of study, they call it windows, mirrors, and doors. Mm -hmm. And how to look at characterization as a reflection of yourself, a doorway into another culture, or maybe even some kind of like peek into another way of being or knowing or listening. Mm -hmm. And so that just the, that those like three little words have been like really inspiring for how kids can access what they read mm -hmm. and then start to become reflective of who they are and their positioning in the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when you think about, you know, we're in October of the school year right now. When you think about what you want a kid to say when they walk out of your classroom in May, what's the parting words that you want from a kiddo? Wow, that's such a good question. Um, I think that I'd love to hear a couple of things. Um, you know, I often say to to my colleagues and even kids sometimes, I'm like, it doesn't matter if you like me. What I care is that you've been learning. And so, um, of course, I would love kids to say, like, Miss Wolf, I'll miss you, <laughs> you know, um, because, of course, we're in it for the kids, yeah, right. you know. Yeah. Um, but I think what matters even more to me is that a couple of things. In the soft skills, I would love for kids mm -hmm. to say to me that they felt safe to take risks. Mm -hmm. They felt safe to share their writing. They mm -hmm. felt safe to get up an author's chair and read something that mm -hmm. they wrote to the, to the class. Um and that my room and the way that we have a culture of learning in my classroom gave them the opportunity to feel safe to take risks. So because I think I also believe in literacy that you're not going to become a better writer if you don't feel safe trying to take the risks mm -hmm. to talk about things that you believe in or the way that things should be, right? Yeah. Um, and so I want them to feel safe in that regard. So that would be the the soft, fun thing mm -hmm. that I would love to hear from them. Um, but then I'd also love to hear 
in their reflections, which I do often mm-hmm. throughout the year, I have them look at earlier pieces Mm -hmm. to start reflecting on the things that they've learned that are actually like some of those skills, the knowledge and dispositions in being Mm -hmm. a literacy kid. I want them to be able to actually pick out things that they're seeing that themselves as authors are doing Mm -hmm. in author moves where their language changed Mm -hmm. and where they were able to develop themselves as writers and actually pinpoint how they've moved on this Mm -hmm. like progression of how they were when they first came in to now how they are at the end. Amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for sharing your literacy genius with us. We really appreciate you being here and are inspired by the philosophy and the approach that is important in creating an environment for learning in your classroom. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you both. If you liked what you heard today, go to our Facebook page and like and subscribe. You can also go to YouTube and join our YouTube channel, as well as listen to us on your favorite podcasting app.